Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we're pulling off the road to spend a little time at the High Desert Museum, a fascinating and educational attraction in Central Oregon. That's right, Vicki. The High Desert Museum is one of my favorite local museums in Oregon. It's found just off US 97, um, south of Bend. So I've been to a, a lot of little local museums around the state over the years. But what sets this one apart, I think, is just the sheer breadth and variety of what it has to offer. So, I mean, there are immersive indigenous history exhibits. There are live animals there. There are art installations and a rotation of really interesting offerings that make sure there's like something cool to see there every time you go. Sounds so cool. I have yet to visit there. Um, But here joining us today on the podcast to tell us all about High Desert Museum is Executive Director Dana Whitelaw. Dana, thanks so much for joining us. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us a little bit, I guess, about the mission of the museum? I would love to. And Jamie, that was a great intro to the High Desert Museum. And I think um, a good place to start is 40 years ago. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary. And the inspiration for the High Desert Museum came from the founder, Don Kerr, who wanted to bring the wonder and awe of the High Desert region to visitors. This place, this arid part of the Intermountain West, is a little more subtle and nuanced than other places. And what he created 40 years ago continues to inspire curiosity and and learning about this incredible part of of the inner mountain west and so the mission is um literally to responsibly teach and uh, and incredibly excite our visitors and that notion of excitement and seeing the unexpected is really what i think captures people when they walk through the door So when people do walk through those doors, what is it they're going to see? Paint us a picture. When you walk through the doors of the High Desert Museum, well, you've already taken a left or a right-hand turn off of Highway 97 and started your exploration of the High Desert. You wander through a Ponderosa Pine Forest. And so there's this immediate kind of calm and contemplative place that the museum has put you in. And when you do walk through the doors, you are already starting to immerse yourself in an interdisciplinary exploration of this place. And what I mean by that is that you've already seen some art installations that are subtle and unexpected of fish in the creek outside or um, a deer and young fawns that are bronze sculptures nestled in the walkway as you enter. So that's what I mean by this kind of subtle interdisciplinary exploration that you're primed to start seeing things a little bit more in tuned. And right away, galleries greet you with um, interdisciplinary exhibitions. For example, right now we have an, an exhibit on the Black Rodeo. And then down the hall, you're, you'll be introduced to a North American porcupine and a gray fox that are delighting visitors and really love their public as well. And our wildlife ambassadors to undertold creatures that we don't get to see very often. And that's a little bit of a start of the type of Um, introduction to the high desert that you see when you walk through the doors. Going a little bit further into the museum, you'll be put into the place and the space and the time to start thinking about since time immemorial, who are the people who have been here and starting to explore and get to know and be inspired by the indigenous communities of the plateau region. And that's a pretty incredible way uh, to start seeing things differently and understanding the um, the interplay of humanity and this landscape. So, okay, I must ask, the the furry critters that you have, the animals. I'm a big animal lover. Can you tell me more about all of the animals that you have? Because I, when I think <laughs> of a museum, I don't automatically think that there'll be you know animals around. 
It's true. The word museum tends to have a little bit more of a static um, connotation to us. And this museum is anything but static. The founder described it as a museum that's not bounded by walls, but by rivers and mountains and trees and habitat. And I think that's a lovely way to talk about it. And the the wildlife is a pretty critical component of um, introducing our visitors to, um, to animals in the high desert. So everything from porcupines and the gray fox to we have three river otters, North American river otters, who really don't do anything unless it's super fun and active. And um, all the way to an incredible collection of raptors, some of the most visible predators that we have in the high desert. And then going a little bit more granular, we have reptiles and amphibians and fish and insects to explore. So it's quite the range from mammals to birds uh, to invertebrates. And fish are in there in unexpected ways as well. Salmon and sturgeon, um, lamprey eel, which are super fascinating. Uh, so we don't shy away from showing kind of the most charismatic animals like otters to um, perhaps ones that need a little bit more understanding like the vulture or the lamprey. <laughs> And so did the museum always have um, animals included or is that a change that was made after a few years? The animals and the wildlife has have been a part of the museum since the beginning, since wow. its inception. Uh -huh. And I think that that was um, just so phenomenal and uh, amazing for the founder to say, you know, if we really want visitors to connect with this place... It's not through taxidermy or two-dimensional panels talking about wildlife. It's actually putting them in the place and space of their habitats. And so to do that, the other piece that's really important that the High Desert Museum does, it's these subtle habitats. So as you're wandering through the grounds, we have about a mile of trails, um, you'll come across and sort of discover the otter habitat. It's not something that... Um, it's less of a zoo and more of an exploration of, of high desert habitats and that riparian system of creeks and rivers and lakes um, are super important to, uh, to talking about the different types of habitats here. And, and the otters are a great way to, um, to explore that, that really important habitat that supports a ton of other invertebrates, underwater invertebrates, fish, birds, um, and all of the things that make those riparian habitats diverse. That element of exploration through the museum is something I think you all do, do very well. I think the last time I was there uh, in the fall, just walking around the museum, I mean, I saw, uh, of course, the, the otters eventually out there, um, saw some, uh, the, the burrowing owls, which I really love, um, animals that I feel like I never, I'm not going to see in the wild very easily. You can see right there and get up and close to, um, but then just wandering across, like, I mean, there was, um, this interactive art exhibit, um, that was about wildfire, I believe that was on its way out. And there was another exhibit about, um, you know, designing, different types of uh, shelters for climate change and climate catastrophe. And there's, of course, all the regular exhibits you have. There's the Black Rodeo Photography, which was beautiful and fabulous. And what I love is like coming there next time, a lot of that stuff is not going to be there, but there's going to be new stuff in place of that. And it's that like constant rotation and that, that sense of you can wander around and see so many different kinds of things that makes that experience really cool. I think that's something that the museum has really grounded itself in is always being something new, whether that's the otters are doing something new. Maybe they were napping the last time you were there and this time they're out frolicking in snow. And then those changing galleries as well, that we've had an immersive light exhibition that's inspired by wildfire by the artist Stefan Hindi. Um, art and design and architecture exhibits to see how can architecture and design start adapting to changing climates and what does that mean for the high desert region and Oregon in general when um, things can't can't stay static and we need to be planning for the future and thinking imaginatively and creatively and um, and with design. Um, a new exhibition that just opened explores the hidden part of the winter habitat, which is called the Subnivian. So under the snow from the top of the soil, 
to the top of the snowpack and an area that might seem static, but is actually a dynamic layer of habitat for all of the wildlife and birds and small mammals that stay here and don't migrate or live on top of the snow during the winter. So there's really moments of discovery, depending on if it's an exhibition that you've seen before, but perhaps you're noticing something new or you're with somebody new that notices a different aspect to wildlife that's constantly doing something new or a changing gallery topic like the Black Rodeo or looking at the habitat under the snow. Well, all of this led to you all winning a, a pretty prestigious award a couple of years ago. Isn't that right? The museum won the National Medal for Museums and Libraries in 2021. We're very proud of it, and it builds on the four decades of incredible work that the museum has done. It's the highest honor in the nation for museums, and we're very proud. It recognizes service to community. And I think when we think at our core, what the High Desert Museum does is we are an educational organization that inspires learning through wonder and awe and curiosity for this, this community to learn more about this incredible region that we are either neighbors to or inhabit. Amazing. Do you all have, offer certain programs um, that you, you know, sign up for and you know, smaller groups that are led? We have a lot of learning experiences and certainly coming out of the pandemic, those in-person in learning experiences are, are growing. Um, part of the museum experience is for sometimes 12,000 school kids that we host throughout the year. So school field trips and uh, educator-led classes. We have a full 10 weeks of kids camps during the summer. And as a museum nerd myself, I can't imagine a better way to spend time as a young child to be able to kind of grow up in a museum like this. And then lots of programs for lifelong learners, lectures that happen on a monthly basis on natural history, and then uh, programs that also uh, are companion programs to our exhibition. So as we're hosting an exhibition on Under the Snow, we're going to be talking to snow scientists. And then also workshops and field trips out into the high desert as well. Our wildlife conservation photography workshop is a highlight too. Oh my gosh, those all sound so good. Um so do you have any changes to the museum, any upcoming exhibits that you're really excited for? We'll be opening a new ex exhibition at the end of January called Creations of Spirit that we've been working on for a couple of years. And what the vision behind this exhibition is to show our visitors how indigenous works of art and um, indigenous collections are actually alive and imbued with the spirit of the maker. And so we've been working with seven indigenous artists for a couple of years. They're creating new work that they're using in their community. And then they'll be brought to the museum to be shown um, in this um, kind of more vibrant way instead of objects in uh, glass boxes that you can't see and touch. We'll have a 16-foot Thule Reed canoe, for example, by artist Jefferson Green from the Warm Springs um, Reservation. And he's never made a Thule Reed canoe before, but he's paddled this now in the Deschutes and it'll be brought into the museum. So these types of um, living objects, living traditions, and living works of art were really pretty um, moved by the, the creativity and spirit that these artists have brought these um, objects into uh, our visitor experience for the museum. So cool. I mean, when you, when you envision sort of the future of the museum, um, and you've been around, like you said, 40 years, you just celebrated that big milestone, what do you envision, what do you imagine the future of the museum might look like in another decade or, or four even? A couple of the things that we're, um, that we're working on at the museum is some expansion plans. And we know that putting our visitors into 
the place and space at the museum is one of the most powerful learning experiences. And what I mean by that is walking down to the otter exhibit or having raptors fly over your head or being immersed in a permanent exhibition that takes you back to a certain place and time or perhaps transports you to another part of the high desert, like the Black Rock Desert or uh, gold mines in Montana. And one of the things that we're planning on is a canopy walk, which essentially brings brings our visitors out to explore up in the forest canopy. And it's one thing to learn and to read about forest ecology on a panel. It's another thing to be fully immersed in what that habitat could look like. So that's one project that we have um, coming up a couple of years away. But we also know that art and art experiences are really resonating with our visitors. We are the largest cultural organization east of the Cascades. And without a dedicated art museum on this side of the mountains, we have uh, some amazing community art centers. But we're planning a gallery that's dedicated to exhibiting art that will be able to borrow collections from further afield and larger art collections and making sure that our community that we serve here has access to those types of experiences. So we're pretty excited about that. Wow. So for for folks who want to come visit the High Desert Museum, um, what what are the sort of the basics of what days are you open? What are the times? What's the admission? What should people know about about before they go and uh, visit? We're open um, every day during the week. In the winter, our hours are 10 to 4. And towards the spring, starting at spring break, we'll start opening at 9 and be open from 9 to 5 uh, through the summer and into the fall. So we're we're easy to find just south of Bend off of Highway 97. And you can check our website for all of the details on admissions. Becoming a member is a great way to visit the museum over and over again and to be part of this High Desert Museum community. Well, we uh, here are a, you know, outdoors and travel podcast. And of course, High Desert Museum is situated in a, a really beautiful natural setting. So um, I, I wondered if you could maybe give a few uh, uh, recommendations for folks if they wanted to maybe go on a hike, go see something cool. What are some spots that are right there around the museum? There are some incredible places to explore around the High Desert Museum, and some of our favorites are further south at Lava Lands, which is part of the Deschutes National Forest Complex. Um, there are lo- the Lava River Cave is another pretty exceptional experience to go underground and see some of the amazing geology that adds to this landscape. Further up the mountains, um, there's some great hikes up on the Cascade Lakes. And then we love the Sagebrush Sea out east of us. So the Badlands area, that's a wilderness area. And heading out just a little bit east from Bend is a pretty incredible way to start exploring the high desert. Well, Dana, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. So great to chat with both of you. Thanks for showing interest in the museum. Absolutely. Well, I think that'll do it for us today, folks. But until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast, as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale, Andrew Thien, and Elena Neal Sachs. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of sense.